This week, we've been watching a great 70s film called The Friends of Eddie Coyle, starring Robert Mitchum. There was a 1973 release, I believe, uh, directed by Peter Yates. Also stars Richard Jordan and a few other notable faces, like that guy from The Godfather. You know the one? Mo Green. Do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. I made my bones when you were going out with cheerleaders. What did you think of this film, Dave? Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's a really great film. Um, I mean, I'll I'll start off by saying the, the the best thing about the film was to see Woolworths on screen. Um, we miss it dearly. <laughs> it's there as the Northerners, party, but... we really miss Woolworths, especially <laughs> at Christmas. Yeah, um, great great film. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a film that's very um, fatalistic. Um, You're telling me, yeah, big time. It's you know, it's so gritty. It's such a neo noir kind of feeling film that there's no, uh, you know, nothing's going to end up well for anyone in in the film. It's classic seventies fare in that sense, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And I, uh, I mean, over the last twelve months or so, I've been catching up on a lot of the seventies films I'd never seen before. Because yes. I always tell people, that's my favorite era of cinema. That's my favorite decade, you know, uh, say from 68 till 82. You just can't really do any wrong with with the uh, new Hollywood, etc. Some great American independent cinema then. But there was lots of holes in, and there still is, I suppose, in my, um, you know, in, in what I've seen in my back catalog there. So, uh, you know, I've managed to catch up on things like last year, What's the Last Detail? You can check out my review for that on the website, moremovies.co.uk, link below in the description. Uh, also, The Conversation, same again for that. So there was, there's a couple of them I started to catch up on. The Friends of Eddie Coyle was one of them. So I was like, let's get hold of this. Let's watch it. Let's see what all the fuss is about. And you're absolutely right. It's completely, you know, fatalistic. You know everybody's going to end up in a, a bad way, one way or another. Yeah. It's, it's the seventies, man. You know, nobody survived, right? That's it. But that's what makes it interesting, isn't it? Because it's that kind of you'd moved away from by the by you get time you get to the seventies. I think with Hollywood, you'd moved away from the happy ending, classical fairy tale Hollywood. Yeah. Um, although you had had noir, of course, sure. but generally speaking, the mainstream cinema was uh, very happy go lucky. And as you say, when we get into the seventies and the the new wave and stuff, it's very much more dark and gritty and um, realism's kicking real, in. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the things that prompted me to watch this one in particular of all the ones we've got to work through from the seventies that we haven't seen, um, was a video from a friend of ours that we are friends with on Twitter and on YouTube called cinema cities. Go and check them out. We'll put a link to their, um, YouTube channel below as well, but they did an absolutely fantastic video about Boston um, yeah. Because that's where it's based. Um, you know, like most of these films, it's always New York or LA. They're the two main cities that we usually have these stories in. But that's one of the great unique parts about um, Eddie Coyle is that it's in Boston. So, you know, you got this uh, like bank robbery scenario going on. So it was reminding me of things like Dog Day Afternoon. We've got yeah. the uh, bank robbery great scenario job. there. Uh, and we've also got things like um, Charlie Varick which is another one we've got to see yet. We haven't actually seen that, but I do know about it. And uh, I understand that's quite a, a lot to do with bank robberies and stuff. You also got other things like Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, which I've got to get you to watch as well soon because that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I like I like these kind of crime films where, you know, it's the old days, hard cash is king, hard cold cash, they're going after it, you know. Um, they're going to stick the place up. And uh, it's, you know, it's just classic stuff, isn't it? It is the, the bank robbers were, were were fantastic in it, and uh, we was, we were saying about it that um, it reminded me a little bit. Uh, recently, watched that Hell or High Water, um, great film, and that had a similar premise that obviously must be inspired from something like this of the oh, small little banks that they go and rob and stuff. And um, I loved seeing the old banks with the old vaults and they're spinning them around and opening yeah. them up and everything. The size of that classical. door when he opens it. Oh, it massive. was like it was like a foot of steel, wasn't it? I was going, he's opening it very slowly, but then I was thinking, yeah, it probably weighs like two cars, you know. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> massive, massive thing. 
But yeah, um, it is great to see all that stuff. It's old world really now. And um, yeah. it's a world we grew up in or it was sort of like, you know, that was that was still around when we were growing up and uh, in the 80s. Well, for me in the 80s, for you in the 90s. But it's kind of dying off now, that sort of thing. It's all cryptocurrency and, you know, uh, yeah. hackers and cyber thieves. The, the bank robbery is not the same sort of thing anymore, especially in the movies. But, you know, there's there's a great tradition of uh, 70s crime films from, you know, everything from the French Connection um, through to uh, like something like Straight Time with um, Dustin Hoffman and um, M. Emmett Walsh. That's a really great film. Um, yeah. So there's loads to catch up on there. Um, Badge 373, Robert Duvall, The Killer Elite and The Outfit, films like this that we we want to check out and catch up on. You know, as far as there not being too many hot new releases at the moment for us to get our teeth into. It's a good opportunity to go back and check out these ones from from the classic era that we haven't seen yet. And I do love the 70s. I mean, Robert Mitchum in this is just absolute class through and through. Yeah. I was about to say that that's the, the standout. I mean, Robert Mitchum's performance is fantastic. It's uh, as he always is, because as we, yeah. we've mentioned before, his voice is just so commanding and charismatic. It's, it's brilliant. That gravelly... It? You know, hard bastard and I love that <laughs> yeah and he's like this he's like a lost soul really isn't he in the in the film like he yeah. doesn't really know um what he's meant to do no and uh, it's quite an interesting character um Peter Boyle of course in it is that slimy bastard um, Absolute yeah, son of a bitch, yeah. <laughs> He's great though, isn't he? He's great at it. He is. And it's lovely to see Peter Boyle in it. I mean, he was in a lot of those films from the 70s, uh, usually just having those bit parts, like in Taxi Driver. He's in it, you know, a little bit. You see him here and there. Um, and he pops up in stuff. But in in this film, he had a bit more of a substantial role, which is great. I also love to see Richard Jordan as well. Um, this is a truly forgotten movie star or and tv star he did a lot of television as well but you go back to that era 70s and 80s he was in everything if richard jordan wasn't in it it you know what's going on and i think his role in this yeah. is brilliant he's such a, a again a son of a bitch um that bit where he bursts in on those guys that well they're all got their ski masks on ready to go out and do the robbery i was cracked up by that i thought it was brilliant <laughs> April Fool, motherfuckers. I mean, that was the interesting part of the film, really, that it, you didn't really know where it was going in terms of yeah. surprising you in terms of the yeah. plot and stuff. There was many times I was there going, what, what's happening? Uh, you know, yeah, where are we going now? Surprise. What's going to yeah. happen? Um, which I see, thought was pulled off brilliantly. because You it's could hard see to that, do. that sort of uh, influence... Um, from things like Mean Streets and stuff like that. That ending obviously reminded me of the ending of Mean Streets. It's the same sort of deal, really. Not quite as graphic as Scorsese's uh, debut feature there, but certainly that same sort of thing. It's a gone era now. It's 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 over. It's finished. All of that stuff. Most of the people that were in it are dead. You know? Yeah, because there's, there's one to mention, obviously, um, Stephen Keats. Um, sure. Who plays the gun runner. Yeah. Um, Jackie in it and he was fantastic in it and sadly we mentioned him a couple of weeks ago in one of our history articles he he died in uh, 1994 he's only 49 um, yeah apparent suicide sure but this was his first film um yeah he was in Death Wish and The Gambler and a few of us over the years he's one of those uh, faces was, a lot of people who really love movies if they even if they didn't know his name they'd know his face and it's like, oh that guy him, yeah but he's great in this isn't he he's really he cool in uh Friends of Eddie Coyle but uh, it's all that stuff we've... I mean, we talked about this before, about things like um, The Warriors, for example. Uh, yeah. That era, where it's shot, you know, in this case, it's shot in Boston. You see all the skylines, the gritty realness of it all. Yeah. It, it wouldn't... It, it's hard to do now. Um, you know, we've talked about you couldn't really film a film like that in New York anymore. No. The same would probably apply here. It's, it's hard to pull off, but they do, and it looks fantastic. It's very physical and real. Yeah. Again, alluding to the French connection, the cars, um, there's a few moments oh, those where there's cars, chases. And there's some great crashes and-, and some great car chases in there. And that's another that great fantastic. feature of these kind of 70s crime films is that they had great car chases, usually great car crashes as well. And, you know, you can really hear that steel getting ground up and smashed together and all that glass smashing. That's gone now, you know, because if you look yeah. at something modern like... Um, 
Fast and the Furious, you know. I mean, obviously, they crash cars and stuff in there, but everything looks super slick. Even the way the cars flip are done to a point where it's meant to look, you know, aesthetically perfect. Whereas when you watch this old 70s stuff, it was like they were running and gunning and they were just, you know... um, shoot the shit out of everything, probably got several cameras going and, and these these stunt drivers were just incredibly talented and they just went for it and did these crashes for real. That's it. But that's that's why I like these films. They're very realistic. They you know they're yeah. from a bygone era that that is is long gone now. But um there's a whole wealth of material there to uh, lean upon in the seventies in terms of these great crime films. And Friends of Eddie Coyle is definitely up there. Didn't you say I had like 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes? Yeah, it's got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it's definitely critically applauded. So it's definitely one to go and watch. Criterion have uh, done a remaster recently, so yeah, uh, which is what we were watching. So uh, go check that out. It's it's well worth uh, watching. Um, it looked great, you know, have been scanned and yeah. stuff and touched. Lovely up picture. And, uh, there was a the one thing I've got to mention. The other thing I really enjoyed about it was the masks they were wearing. Oh yeah, during the bank robberies, sure. Because of course it was like that plastic, uh, see through, uh, mask. Yeah. So it kind of obscured their face. Yeah. But from a distance, you wouldn't even tell they were wearing a mask, no. so to speak. Yeah. And I thought it was really clever, um, and sinister in the it film. It was very was sinister, well. very sinister looking. To see them all sitting there in the car with the masks on and they've pulled their beanie hats on top of them, you know, it's yeah, it's classic, isn't it? It's like, that's how you rob banks in the 70s, guys. <laughs> that's how you do it. Great film, though. Really great to catch up on it. Like Dave says, really was. if you get the chance, get hold of the Criterion uh, copy of it because it's a beautiful picture and it looks ace. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider supporting us at buymeacoffee.com or join us on Patreon, all links below.